ziua, bine v-am găsit la interviurile de ce sport. Invitatul meu de astăzi este fostul antrenor al celor de la FCU Craiova 1948, Giovanni Constantino. Bună ziua, domnule Constantino! Bună dimineața! Giovanni Constantino are 39 de ani, e născut la Messina, în Italia. În România a antrenat în campionat 16 etape, 16 meciuri, plus două meciuri de, de Cupa României. A înregistrat șapte victorii, cinci în campionat, două în, două în cupă, trei rezultate de egalitate și opt în frângeri. Uh, Mr. Giovanni, we will uh, have this interview in English because uh, uh, you had a, a bit of time now uh, away from Romania. Uh, how was your time in, uh, in Craiova? It was a very good time uh, in Craiova. First of all, I'm sorry that I speak English, but after some months, uh, for me, it's better to explain English some uh, concept. It was excellent time uh, because I really like the, the atmosphere, I really like the country and the fans, the love of the fans. I could never expect to meet uh, this kind of love by the fans. Uh, because uh, also was a, for me a surprise that in some away matches, uh, I many fans from opponent uh, say to me, we respect you, Costantino, and it, for me was uh, incredible. I remember in uh, Costanza, in Galazzi, um, because I believe that when you respect the people, then the people respect you. Yes. Uh, you are Italian, you know about the rivalry in, uh, in, uh, in a certain city, I'm referring now to Milan. Uh, But in Craiova, how was the rivalry between the two teams, uh, FCU and Universitatea? Look, uh, I have to be honest. Me, I don't go so much uh, out uh, in the city. It was very difficult for me because I always focus about my job and what I have to do. Then uh, when you play every week, uh, there is a match preparation and trainings. So I didn't uh, leave so much the, the city. But for sure in the club, there is a lot of rivality. And uh, for me, that derby in November, when I just arrived after two, three weeks that I was there, was incredible. We draw a match even with uh, 10 players against 11. And uh, it was incredible also that at the end, the players went uh, in the tribune, in the Pelusa with the fans to celebrate a draw. Uh, for me, it was an uh, incredible atmosphere. And for sure, next season, uh, I think that the Romanian football will miss uh, this kind of derby. Uh, about next season, did you expect Feceu to, to go down in, in the second league, considering the no. team? No, no, absolutely not. Uh, even if uh, in February, I, I was saying that uh, if some things are not changing, The team is risking to go to second division. So uh, I was aware that was very difficult for the team to save because uh, uh, get the playoff was uh, one realistic target for us after uh, many wins in a row that we had uh, in uh, in December. But for sure, I am not stupid. So I understand that when there are some problems, if you don't fix these problems, then the team go down, 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 down. But uh, but I didn't expect that uh, that the team can arrive at the bottom because. Uh, was uh, absolutely incredible. Yes, but uh, did you expect it to go down like this? I mean, okay, it, it's going down uh, if uh, things aren't changing, but the last position? No. No, because the team uh, quality is not for the last position. So for sure some things didn't work very well because uh, I believe that uh, maximum you can play the, the play out, the barrage. Yes but not to go down, because go down, uh, especially in the bottom, uh, was uh, incredible. Yes, but uh, maybe the often changes of coaches uh, had a, uh, was it a reason for, for this? I don't know this. Uh, in my side, I believe that when you don't have stability and you don't have straight decision and the players don't follow just one direction, is a problem because uh, uh, there is always alibi for the bad performances but I think that everybody needs to get the responsibility when there are bad results and uh, you have to understand you have to feel in football that sometimes uh, it's very dangerous it's not enough the quality you need uh, much more and uh, teams like Botoshani, Dinamo uh, get not only the, the quality because I think they were lower quality than Pecheu but they put something more on the pitch to save the team 
uh, especially Botoshani that uh, make a good market transfer window in January, February. And uh, in FetchEU, we didn't have any movement, just one player or something like that. And if you don't make a movement, then the other uh, go over you. So this was one of the reasons. But uh, also, I think when you don't understand the danger situation, uh, then you go down, 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 and uh, you don't feel that you can relegate. It's not enough to quality. It's not enough to say, OK, we are a good team, we will save. You need something more, much more. Yes. Uh, you had uh, an excellent December. You finished the month with uh, that 2-0 uh, win against uh, FCSB. But then when the championship restarted, uh, you lost that rapid after a very good match. The last 15 minutes were, were poor. Was, yes, that, uh, was that the start of the downfall? No. The start of downfall was the beginning of January. The start of downfall was beginning of January. When I say that some uh, things about... Uh, some things were <laughs> not good, were not correct. But uh, I was not listening. Uh, that had influence for the match preparation, for the preparation for the new new part of the season. Uh, for me, there was a friendly match that we shouldn't do, and we got we lost two players with Poliashi when we lost for two. Uh, and then uh, I believe that many people say about the substitutions with Rapid uh, that make influence that we lost, but. Uh, you know, Rapid uh, put out one player and put inside the top player. So it's something that uh, that can happen. But for me, that match with Rapid uh, was made influenced by the friendly match that we played just five days before with Poliash in uh, Bucharest, with travel, with ice. Uh, was a very bad decision by by the club to make that friendly match that I was totally against to to make. Um, I believe that yes, with uh, with Rapid was not uh, last 10-15 minutes, but then we play with Farul and we can draw. Even with Farul was very good at that moment. We didn't have a penalty with Companucci. Then we beat uh, Dinamo, so still we were in time. But also with Yashi in my last match, we make one-one uh, and was a balanced match. Uh, I think that. Uh, the down uh, was after because uh, when you lose four one with Botoshani, when you lose this kind of matches, then you go down, really down. <laughs> so I think that in February still the situation was under control. Uh, in February, in in the start of February after the rapid match, uh, the owner of the team, Adrian Mititelu, uh, said that you should leave after the loss. Uh, what was your impression of him overall? Uh, believe me, uh, Mr. Mititello is a president that put a lot of money, that uh, lost a lot of money. And the problem is not the Mititello, it's the people that uh, make suggestions to Mititello. <laughs> because uh, Mititello is a person that uh, put, uh, put everything for the, the best of the team. You know, it's not a person that wants the team to lose, uh, because it's his money. And they have big respect of him. But the problem is that when people don't have interest about the team, but have other kind of interest in that moment, then uh, I believe that uh, uh, is a problem for uh, for Mititelu. But uh, I believe that before or after uh, he understands it and uh, he, will, uh, he will make uh, many steps forward in the managing of the club. Also, we left in very good relation with Mr. Mititelu because I have nothing against him. And he has nothing against me. He was very sorry when he when he communicated to me that he wants to change coach because he was not sure that he wants to change the coach. When mm. he said to me, he, th he thought it was n was necessary because some people that uh, probably about football don't understand so much. They say to him uh, that uh, this change was necessary, but it was not necessary. It was clear by the results. Uh, you are coming from uh, from Italy, uh, football that is uh, in the top five leagues. Uh, what was your impression about Romanian football? Uh, Romanian football, uh, I like a lot. That uh, uh, in the stadium uh, there are a lot of people. There is a lot of atmosphere, more or less in every every opponent, except for some clubs. But more or less every stadium is uh, there are a lot of people. I think it's quite technical football compared also to other leagues in Europe. Need a bit uh, much more tempo. Uh, because it's not a uh, uh, very high intensity. Uh, the fact that there is not stability can be a problem because uh, less stability you have, more the players are confused about uh, the situation. But it's a, it's a league with a big potential, especially because the top teams are very good teams. So 
I, I believe the FHSB this season can go to group stage of uh, some European competition. And I think it's necessary because uh, if you want to develop the league, uh, you need to have uh, teams competitive in Europe. Yes. Uh, which team from Romania did you find the most difficult opponent? Difficult. Uh, I think that every team has weak points and good points. I believe that uh, every team has some characteristic. This is one thing that, uh, for example, I find in Romanian football. Uh, in other leagues, sometimes the teams play all everybody in the same way. In um, in Romania, no. Every match is different because, uh, for example, we st we speak about FCSP that play 4-3-3. Nothing special about tactically, but. Uh, team with quality, that they play very good together. And then you play against a team like uh, Ocelul, that they don't have so much quality, but they have a good uh, fighting spirit. They fight on every ball, they play on the second ball. Then you play against the team that at that time Petrolulu was playing 3-5-2, that's playing a different kind of football. Voluntario play 3-5-2 vertical. Then you play with uh, uh, CSU that play 4-3-3 with a lot of rotation. Uh, uh, rapid 4-2-3-1 with... Uh, Uh, also quality of players, so every match is different. So I find the football that in every team uh, you can find different uh, different uh, way of playing. Also Farul play different football. So uh, this was my impression about uh, the, the, the Romanian football. Yes. Uh, would you coach another team in Romania or only Fecu? <laughs> <laughs> This is a nice question, tricky question. Look, uh, I had a pres president that called me so some uh, some weeks ago about the team, uh, and he said to me that he really appreciate uh, my my job in Fecheu also because he saw something different about game style compared to other Romanian teams. This and also about person, uh, he said that uh, uh, I'm a particular person in Romanian football because there is always scandal, uh, there is always this kind of thing, but I'm more focused about pitch football work. And not about scandal, about other things. Uh, so maybe there will be the chance, but uh, I don't know if Fetcher or not. Um, I don't know what is the future. I don't know if he will be in Romania. I want just to work in a place where I can, when I can show myself and uh, find a club where uh, everybody go in the same direction. Because this is the secret. This is the secret uh, of success of some clubs in uh, Romania that they are everybody together. And there is no one side that going one direction, one side that going another one. Uh, I will not ask the name of the team, but uh, only this: was it a playoff uh, team or a playout team? You, you ask uh, too much. <laughs> Just too much. Okay, good. Uh, what's next for you? Uh, do you have any any other offers? Any any perspectives now? Yeah, I'm speaking with some clubs. Uh, I rejected the offer last week about a club that will play European competition, uh, but not in Romania from a low league, lower league level. Uh, and now we will see, I'm not, uh, I'm open to go to, as I say, to good project because I want to enjoy my job. I'm going uh, in a club that want to develop, I want to improve with youngs, that have vision modern, because, uh, and the one club that really believe in the uh, game style that I propose, because I know is uh, is uh, specific, is particular and, uh, Uh, this is what I would like to have from my future. Then it doesn't matter where. Me, I love football. Football is uh, is the thing that uh, make me wake up in the morning, and I want to enjoy it. If I have to work and uh, don't enjoy, then it's not for me. Yes. Uh, when you came to Romania, you learned Romanian very fast. Uh, in about two or three weeks, you al you already could speak in Romanian with the reporters, with the press after the matches. Why did you do this? Because most uh, foreign coaches come here, coach, and if they stay a long time, then they will learn Romanian. You did it very fast. It's comfortable, this, but I'm not a comfortable person. I like challenges and this kind of respect for Romania. Look, uh, I tell you one thing. When I was coming in Romania, I was a bit afraid because I was coming from a uh, Hungarian uh, league and Hungarian national team, and I know that uh, there is not a very good relation between Hungarian fans and Romanian fans, but I find... Uh, uh, a lot of uh, appreciation by Romanian people. I didn't, I didn't uh, expect that. I was thinking that uh, there was some prejudice, I don't know, it's in English, that I was in Hungary and blah, 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 but uh, nothing, nothing. From the first uh, period that I was in, uh, in, uh, in Romania, I think the appreciation by Romanian people. 
and this kind of respect by me to 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 give uh, something to Romanian. I'm not a coach that comes for the money and take the money and goodbye. Oh, Romania is a bad place. I'm not this kind of person. I I think that if you don't identify yourself in the place where you are, you can't do a good job. And this kind of respect is necessary by coaches because we are not people that take just the money. We have to give something to, to the country, to the club, to the players that we have. And if we do this, then we do a good job despite the result. Because if I was just a normal coach, uh, uh, that uh, just uh, work and goodbye. Uh, I didn't get the messages that they get uh, almost every day from Fletcher of France. But if you give something to the people, then this is the most important thing because we need to give something to the people to make people happy, not to just uh, take our salary. This is not the way that I like that the coaches work. Okay. What did you think about the under 21 uh, rule? The fact that you had to use a young player every match, all the match? But I think next season will change, no? There is uh, something, it's it's uh, not official yet. I think it has to be as official as soon as possible to, to give the opportunity to the club to, to prepare the transfer window, you know? Uh, I think it's okay. I think in some leagues, uh, is, uh, in some leagues is normal. One IU21 uh, is, is a good compromise. Uh, then, okay, you need to play with the players that are the best. So maybe this on U21 can put in their mind that it's enough uh, for them to play. And then when they are 22, they don't play anymore. So I think that is a good rule if it's used in a, in a good way. Uh, but I believe that most of this is necessary a change of mentality. Because in Romania, like in Italy, we have a problem that we don't believe in youngs. And we need to believe much more in young players because young players can develop much more. You can build the mentality, you can improve the skills. So I always push in Italy this and I think in Romania is necessary too. It's not that after one mistake you can change the and say this player is not good. They need time. They need time to make a mistake. I say one player that was with me in Fecho, Alexandru Blidar, player that never played before me, I put on the pitch, he scored against Rapid, then he disappeared. But it's not a, about a match that was negative, that you can cancel the quality of a player. Because young player needs to be weighted and you need to work with them to make them better. Yes, uh, this is what uh, uh, Gheorghe Hadji does in, uh, in Faro. He works with young players, he forces them to play from uh, very young ages and then, uh, mm -hmm. and then they become better and better and better until Something happens, they transfer, they go, they go to another team. Uh, but is there a problem for Romanian football that we bring a lot of foreign players and maybe not the best foreign, foreign players? This I don't know. This I don't know because uh, in my opinion there are some good players, uh, foreigner, and it's good uh, for foreigner to get competition with, uh, to give competition to, to Romanian players. The thing is that, of course, you need quality players. It's the same speech that uh, you do in Italy, uh, that you take foreigner players that are not good. I believe that uh, foreigner players, you need to get them good. Uh, this is about scouting. Uh, uh, this is about uh, the vision of the club. I think that every club prefers to save money. They don't care if he's Romanian or if he's uh, uh, foreigner. As you said, uh, Gheorghe Agi is... Uh, He's very modern a coach about uh, the the work that uh, is is doing with the uh, with the young uh, Romanians. I appreciate a lot his job. I really like Farul as vision as vision of club. I think they are quite modern, probably one of the most modern club in uh, in Romania. And uh, I think that is the way, especially for the small clubs, to get the players that are young. Uh, you develop in the academy, uh, also from the market, and uh, and then you sell. I think that uh, foreigners, uh, there are too many foreigners, yes, but uh, sometimes they give quality and competition for Romanians because uh, you need a good mix. Because just Romanians is not good, just foreigners is not good. So you need a mix. Yes, you coached one of the, uh, one of the players who is considered one of the best players in, uh, in Romania, Bauza, uh, also uh, uh, Baton. Uh, do you think they could make uh, a step forward and go to another team in the first division or they should stay with FCU now and help them come back? Look, for the quality that they have, uh, they, can, they have to stay in first division. Because in second division, I think they, they risk too, 
to be in a level that uh, is too low for them and they are too good players and sometimes you lose motivation to go from first to second. I believe that they need to do some step uh, forward in their career. About the two players, Willy Byton is a guy that, uh, as I see, is a much more uh, central midfielder compared to, to winger. He's a good left foot, smart uh, worker in the training. Um, I think he's a good sign for every club. Bauza is a different kind of player, very technical player. He's a player that uh, if you put him in the center of your game style, he can be very useful. And uh, as I say to Bauza, uh, to Willy, to both, when I met them in the club, I said, Pecheu must be a, a step in your career. You need to f- look forward in your career to play good in Pecheu, to go in a high uh, level targets because uh, you have the potential and the ability to do that. Okay. Uh, coming back to foreign coaches in Romania, uh, Rapid now has changed uh, Bergodi uh, with another foreign coach, Neil Lennon. Uh, the resume of Neil Lennon is uh, very well known. He has five uh, league titles with uh, Celtic. Uh, he has four Scottish Cups and uh, he also won a cup in, uh, in Cyprus with uh, Omonia. But do you think that it's uh, hard for a foreign coach, especially a British coach, to train in a championship like uh, the Romanian league? I believe that uh, uh, some nationalities are much more connected with some others. What I mean? Uh, Romanian is very similar to Mediterranean country. So for Italian, Spanish, uh, Greek, uh, uh, these people, uh, they, we have quite similar mentality. I had the luck to coach in many countries like Romania, Hungary, Slovakia, Cyprus, uh, Finland. For example, for an Italian to be adapted to Finnish football is totally different. I believe that Scottish football and uh, Romanian football are very different. Uh, this doesn't mean that we we'll do a good job or a bad job. I mean, are just yes, different. Two different styles you, of play. Yes. Yes, but different style of play, but also different approach by the fans, by the media, uh, by the players. Uh, Maybe from Scotland to to Romania is very different, but he is coming. He worked also in Cyprus, and Cyprus mentality is very similar with Romanian mentality about football. So maybe he's used for that. So it's a 50-50. If he was coming straight from Scotland, it was more difficult. But uh, if he had the experience about Cyprus, maybe he knows what he will expect him. Yes, but but for the Romanian football, is it good to bring coaches that have trained at a high level, like Neil Lennon has? Yes, I believe that uh, also in Italy we need uh, coaches that come from different mentalities to open our mind to different ideas, different vision. So I'm a person that also in Italy would like to have more foreigner coaches, even if I'm Italian, because can open you to different ideas and different vision. Um, in Romania, you need uh, good coaches, but As I say, it doesn't matter if you are coming from Celtic or you are coming from uh, third division in Scotland. Uh, what is important in football is not the past, it's the future. What you did in the past, you can win also. 50. Luca Ancelotti was uh, winning uh, many Champions League. He went to Napoli and he didn't do a good job and he was sacked. So it doesn't matter what you do in the, in the past. It's more important the connection between the, the coach and the new club and the new players. The good the chemistry between uh, these two. because. Uh, There is a, for some kind of dressing room is good a kind of coach, for some others is good. So it's important by the club to choose the right uh, coach for the, for the team that they have. And uh, this uh, you will see just in the future with the results. Uh, do you as a coach like uh, players with personality? Because I saw an interview with uh, Florin Maxim, uh, the coach of Corvino Funedoara, the winner of the cup. Uh, he said that uh, most coaches say they want p- players with personality, but when those players uh, speak up uh, in training or after matches, they are immediately uh, r- run down by the media, by the coaches, by the club. What do you feel about play- players with big personality, with big e- egos? If, if they work, if they, are, uh, if they are the first on the pitch that they come and they have the mentality to be leaders, not only with the, with the words, but also with technique, Yes, and with example, yes, I like, I love. Every club needs this player. But if they are leader, that just speak, and then they, they use more the mouth than the legs, uh, I don't like them at all. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay, uh, what did you think about the fact that uh, a second division team won the Romanian Cup this year? Was it expected? Did, did you find it... Uh, were you thinking about this when you were uh, coaching in Romania, that it was possible? Uh, I really believe that when I was there in Fecio, I wanted to win the Cup and I was thinking uh, the steps to win the Cup because we beat Fecio Sebe, we put out... Uh, yeah, we beat the Salon, uh, also Dinamo was in the same group, I don't remember the other team. Ocel, we played Ocel, with... Ocel was in the same Ocel, group. Ocel, yes, yeah. yes, because we didn't play with Ocel. And um, I really believe in that moment that we can win the league, because also I saw the steps. And uh, I believe that in the semi-final we could play with Chefer, uh, but then uh, play voluntary and uh, for Vino. Uh, Corvino was lucky to not get Fecho. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yes, because uh, I saw Corvino play. Uh, I want to congratulate the coach because uh, he did a very good job, uh, very good game style and also good spirit. This is an example that when a team uh, doesn't need, you don't need uh, top players, you need a good group. And uh, the coach and the club was able to, to build a good group. I really hope that they can do a good job in Europe because it would be... Fantastic. The team of second division can uh, can go forward in Europe. Yes. Uh, and uh, coming to the last part of the interview, uh, there are 10 more days and the Euros will start. Uh, Romania, Italy are there. Uh, do you have a, a, a possible winner in mind? It's very difficult to this kind of competition. You know, uh, Italy is in a group that is quite uh, difficult. Romania is coming back to international competition after uh, some years. I think uh, that if they start well, uh, they can get the enthusiasm and try to go to the next round, even if it's not easy. For Italy, the group Spain, Croatia, Albania is tough. Uh, because uh, Croatia, Italy has a bad tradition and Spain is always Spain. Yes. But um, go to semi-final for Italy would be a very good result. And for Romania, go to next round would be very good. And as I say, the coming back uh, to international uh, competition uh, with a bit of enthusiasm, Romanian can be can be can can do good. The only thing uh, I hope that even if the first result will be not okay for Romania, then they don't uh, the media, the press, they don't start to kill the, the players and the team because still there are other two matches. And uh, there is all the time to to recover because even with three points, you can be one of the top uh, teams in the third. So until the last match, everything is open. Yes. And uh, and my last question for you: You talked earlier about uh, the need for Italian football to have foreign managers. Uh, the best team in the in Europe right now, Real Madrid, has an Italian uh, manager. The best team in England has a Spanish manager, Guardiola, and the second team also has a Spanish manager, Arteta. Uh, in Germany, uh, the champion has a Spanish manager, but in Italy, uh, the top team, Inter, has an Italian manager. Napoli already uh, signed Antonio Conte, an, Itani uh, an Italian manager. Um, AC Milan also had an Italian manager this year. Atalanta has an, Itali uh, an Italian manager. How can uh, the foreign uh, coaches change the mentality of Italian teams right now? Or what, do, what needs to change in the, in the mentality of Italian teams in order to win the Champions League again, not only the, the Scudetto? With Italian coach or with foreigner coach? Uh, maybe with, uh, with both. <laughs> but uh, you look, there is a huge difference. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the matches and the competition are winning by the players and not the coach. This is the most important <laughs> thing. There is a huge gap between financial, between Italian clubs and... Uh, Spanish and uh, and uh, English uh, teams. So this gap uh, is quite uh, big. For me, Atalanta won the Europa League with the idea and the vision of the coach connected with the club. Because uh, I tell you, Atalanta coach had many problems with players like Papu Gomez and others during the years. But the club always stand with the coach. And this unity make uh, understanding to every player that every player is uh, not bigger than the coach or than the director or the president of the club. 
In the moment that the players think that they are bigger than the club, is the moment that the club is over. So uh, this uh, is not about uh, the Italian coach that they win, but because this union. This, regarding the coaches, uh, I think that yes, Italy, Spain, we have a good school, we have a good tradition, we have a good mentality about uh, about football. But as I said, it's not just this that make a team uh, winner, but you need the players and you need the chemistry between players, coach and club. So we have a good mentality, but if it's not accepted by the, the club and the environment, you can be also the best coach in the world, but you have a difficult life. Yeah. Uh, also, the last uh, uh, Italian team that won the Champions League was uh, Inter Milan, if I'm not mistaken, and with, yes. with a Portuguese coach on the bench. Yes. <laughs> so, as you see, uh, it doesn't matter the nationality. It's good to have uh, chemistry between everybody, because if there is, uh, then it's much more easy to 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 make a good job. If you if everybody go in the direction that they want, then it's very difficult. And. Um, Yes, uh, we have a good school. We have Coverciano that is quite famous. Uh, we have a good. Uh, we are open to the new game style. Uh, we are changing a bit with the modern coaches, with the young coaches, because all the coaches in Italy were more connected to Catenaccio. But now you can see that teams in Italy play much more uh, in offensive situation. Uh, but we take this from Spain, so you know uh, we are much much more open than what you can imagine uh, with Italian school. And I believe that this chemistry, the best coach who is able to mix uh, all the styles uh, between Italy, Spain, Germany, the quality of Spain, the tactic of Italy. If you are able to mix all these things, then you, I believe you are a good coach. If you are integralist uh, and you go in one direction, I think you don't have a long life. And uh, really the last question, is it better for a coach to be, yeah. a, di to be a dictator or to be more of a friend with the players? Friend uh, is not in, is not possible because uh, players are players and coach is coach. Dictator, I believe that dictator make a very bad uh, end uh, in the history in Italy and in Romania also. So uh, I believe that uh, it's good in the middle because uh, you win with every style of. Uh, there is not a there is not a way to win. There are many ways, but uh, you need to be able to find the good way for the team that uh, that you have. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Costantino, and uh, we wish you. Thank you so much. We wish you the best of luck, and maybe we will see each other in Romania again. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, we will see and muito uh, mais. <laughs> La revedere. La revedere. La revedere.